changes and uh, some obviously some blowouts and you know new looking top ten this week with some new teams creeping in there like TCU and Georgia. Uh, and we got some some good games coming up this week, so we're definitely gonna recap it all again next week on next week's uh, Sports Moves podcast. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna close this segment out. Uh, coming up next, we're gonna get into some WWE action. Uh, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live. We're anxious to see how things panned out after No Mercy uh, on Monday Night Raw. And then we're anxious to see where Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon is going to go with their rivalry. For watching sports moves. Two moodies. One duty. Sports. sports. We'll be right back. What's going on, guys? We are back. Sports Moods. I'm C. Moody here as always with... D. Moody. Two Moody's. One Duty. Sports. If you've been listening, you've been catching up with us. We've been recapping week three in the NFL, week four in college sports, giving our take on our predictions that we had last week and going over some key matchup and key games in college sports. And now we're into WWE. We're going to dive right into Monday Night Raw. And how it started off. It started off with Miss TV and Roman Reigns. And like I was saying last week, the build is starting. It talked about how the Miss, Roman Reigns shoot on him instantly saying that he wouldn't win without the Miss to rise. Jason Jordan would have easily won. Miss shoots back on saying, you know, the she the shield was his backup, the reason he won. Mm-hmm. And saying that the Mr. Raj would have destroyed the shield, to say the least. And Roman strays away from, you know, in, in, initially Roman's like, well, they're doing their stuff, I'm doing mine. But if you want to fight, let's just fight right now. So the Miz kind of, he try, he backs out of it, he tries to walk away. And Kurt Angle is like, you know what, we're going to put all of you in the match. We're going to give the Miz to Raj to Matt and Jason because Jeff Hardy's injured right now. And then Roman Reigns will fight the Miz later on tonight. So how do you feel knowing that the, the because later on we're going to see more of what I'm talking about. But the seeds have been planted. And what I, and I said it exactly. The Miz was going to use his mouth to start that seed of saying, "Well, you know, we can beat the Shield. We're better than the Shield." It's, I know it. Go ahead. You can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> this, and, and for those of you, you understand why I hit that notification. <laughs> this puts me in a terrible mood. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna let you know why. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to catch our No Mercy review, please do so. Uh, we, we did it last night, so it is up uh, on Spreaker and YouTube if you guys want to hear it. And you'll hear much of why I feel the way that I do. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to really get into a lot of No Mercy. We're just going to focus on Monday Night Raw. <coughs> but I honestly believe that you, you should... I, I'm all for the Shield reuniting. Don't get me wrong, but okay. I really feel like if they're going to plant the seed, as you say, the Shield needs to come back to fight a meaningful faction. Right. Uh, I mean, the Miz to Raj, to me, is a joke. It's just, it's giving Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel something to do to but, make them relevant because they were just sitting in the back in catering, chit-chatting, not watching everybody else get airtime but them. Yeah. And now the Miz has made them relevant. Right. Basically, watch they, out for me. He, help he, me keep my Intercontinental title. And, hey, I'm on TV every week. You're going to get airtime if you're with me. True. So just have my back and watch my back. Yeah. And I understand that after No Mercy, the Miz requested that Roman Reigns show up on Miz TV. And then we have them going at it, you know, back and forth over the mic. And it's just like how they're – Throwing shade on each other, like, "Hey, you need the Miz to rise to help you win. Oh, you needed the Shield to help you win." So it's just kind of like, I don't agree with if, we're, if which we're probably going to see, 
and I know you are very excited. Oh, I just feel I like know. you're just excited just because we're getting the shield. I don't care if they're fighting. That's we're it. The shield. <laughs> I don't care if they put three James Ellsworth. <laughs> they, they made they cloned James Ellsworth three times and put him against the shield. I don't and, care. And I and I, I understand the excitement. <clears throat> And underneath it all, I am kind of glad that we potentially could see all three of them together. But like I said on the No Mercy podcast, yeah. how dramatic the breakup was, the comeback Should has be, to be equally as great. And to face the Miz to Raj? No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. And I feel like, as I always throw it out there... It should be the Bullet Club in the place of the Mr. Raj. But I do get your point of possibly building up with the Mr. Raj to get to that. But I, I honestly feel like if you bring the shield back for this, it's, I got gotcha. you. It's not good. I got gotcha. you. So we're going to dive back into it because, like I said, the Miz and Roman Reigns fights later on. And I got some extra stuff that is going to show itself along the rest of the night. But the next match was, um, how was that next? No, yeah, that was the whole match between Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan versus the Miztourage, which was a pretty good match. Um, I kind of liked the dynamic of Miz, I mean, of Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan. They kind of played well together. It, it sucks to see that Jeff Hardy's injured, like seriously injured, that he might be out. They also indicated that the injury that he has is what um, I think Finn Balor was out for surgery ah, for. That's, that's wild. They made an yeah. indication on that, so that's pretty unfortunate to hear. So I wonder what that's going to broken thing. Exactly. So you know that's what we were anticipating. That was supposed to be coming more and more. They always mention it. They always start referencing it more and more. So that's going to really put a damper. And I don't see where that's going to put Matt Hardy. I mean, it was really, if anything, they were trying to push Jeff Hardy solo for at least a couple of weeks. And not saying that Matt Hardy isn't the talent, but you can tell athleticism-wise, Jeff Hardy was the one, the go-to the person. Far, yeah, he's far superior. Yeah. So unless they do something crazy and just make Matt Hardy take Jason Jordan under his wing in the meantime, that that's the only thing I can see to keep Matt Hardy relevant and maybe can give Jason some kind of push. That's the only thing I see. But that was just a basic throwaway match. For and me. I really believe that's a testament to Jeff Hardy <clears throat> getting injured. Yeah. No direction for the Hardys. No. Like I said, they're over here one week, they're over here the next week. We're feuding with the tag team division this week, and then we put Jeff Hardy in the IC title picture. Right. He's in a battle royal. He gets a one-on-one match with the, the Miz, loses. It's just a lot, you know, that they've just been doing with the Hardys that I don't understand. Definitely. Definitely. The next match was... um. Elias versus Apollo, which if you if you actually saw No Mercy, and you either that or you heard our um, No Mercy recap on Sports Moods, it was just really the exact same match that was at No Mercy. There was really no difference. The only difference between the two is that Titus O'Neil actually got a chance to get his hands on Elias. He did pretty much. It even almost ended the same way. Elias came out the ring by Titus. Comes back in the ring. I mean, Elias was able to do his finisher. He starts to mock and beat up on Apollo. And then Titus finally comes in. And this time, he got to put his hands on him. So I feel like this is just something to build to a Titus-Elias match. Which Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a good thing to see. But it's something. Once again, it's throwing away Apollo Crews. It's it's really... And you know what? We're getting into a downward spiral now. Monday Night Raw is going to suck all the way into it is Royal Rumble Mania season. Unless they hurry up with the Shield. I don't even think that. That'll be enough to get people to watch, but that'll be the only reason they'll watch. Exactly. Just to have a consistent, like, great flow to a show yeah. like they've had over the past couple of weeks, it, it's not going to yeah. be that. Yeah, definitely. The show wasn't that great even before all of that, but now it's just going to be, <laughs> you know, very boring up until that point. Yeah. That time of year where they usually turn to turn things around and get things get you excited about WrestleMania. Well, there's one person that's kind of giving some excitement in the Raw, which is my segue into the next match that was coming up. It was Kurt Hawkins coming out saying that he's dedicated on breaking his losing streak. He, the next person comes out, he's going to be the person that he beats, and it just so happens to be Braun Strowman. <laughs> 
already got pissed off. <laughs> angry, pissed dude. off, angry. And Bron. Kurt Hawkins did not want that. He immediately took off, and Braun Strowman chased him through the crowd, choke slamming him through one of the tables in the whole crowd area, then bringing him back up to the front ramp and throwing him through part of the Titatron screen. Mm. And then on top of that, Braun gets up like nothing happened, struts down to the ring, and demands that he needs some action. He needs competition. He's pissed, and he's on a, another path of destruction. And who comes out out of everybody? Dean Ambrose. Which, you know, Dean is always that person. Man. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, like for me, stood up the Brock. Yeah, remember, and now same thing here. Right, so like for a, a tag gimmick, I didn't get it, but being at this Dean Ambrose, like you said, the person who's like, I'm not afraid of anybody, I'll fight whoever, it made sense because of his character. And of course, I mean, Braun Strowman, I won't say destroyed him, it was pretty bad though. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Dean Ambrose had a little quickness, he showed some elusiveness, and of course his scrappiness, that kind of built him and he up. he does have a high tolerance for pain. Too. Yeah, that too, that too. So it made the match good. It made it longer and better than what any other match would be. And it pretty much just ended um, for... No, one high point before I say how it ended. Um, Dean tried to do his little suicide dive outside the ring to Braun Strowman. He catches him, but Dean reverses it into a DDT. And that kind of pulled the tide over for a little bit. But then Dean thought he can jump on him again. And this time... Braun caught him again off the top ropes, and he just turned it immediately into a power bomb. It wasn't no run to it. He just flipped him over and just quick pin, and it was just like I'm done with him now. And I, I guess now that we've seen that, like I, I've watched bits and pieces of Raw, I was just so distraught after. I it. it was just I had, I had to get a chance to just to try to regroup. Um. But I guess now that we have Dean coming out answering that challenge, I guess now since Sheamus and Cesaro probably wasn't there with the whole teeth situation with Cesaro. They were there. They were there? Yeah. I would, okay. I'm going to explain that because okay, you're, you're I didn't right. Really see, I didn't see it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm just flowing with you here. I mean, because, again, I yeah. saw bits and pieces of it. Um, but... It's kind of weird to have Ambrose come out of all people to answer that challenge. Uh, but, I mean, who else is there to answer the challenge? Right. The point, I mean, um, it's just kind of like, so I guess that's over now with well, Sheamus and Cesaro, maybe? I don't know. I think what it is, because I got on, um, what I was going to say is later on that night, Seth Rollins is going to face Sheamus with Cesaro there. But Cesaro is fully dressed, no intentions on. Did he have teeth? He didn't open his mouth at all. He didn't say anything? He d- did not open his mouth at all. Like, when Sheamus fell out the ring, he, he had, had his mouth closed. They could have had some emergency surgery and put some fake pickers in I, I thought they were going to, too, but yeah. So, but I say that before that match happens, Seth Rollins comes backstage to give Dean an ice pack and was like, what are you doing? This is, you know, this is, don't do that. I thought we got over this whole you not thinking and just doing stuff. And then Dean was like... Well, you need to start thinking like you need to stop trying to overthink stuff and just do work off of action because you're predictable. And Seth was like, well, how am I predictable? And he was like, Dean was like, let me guess you're going to say I'm the architect. I beat the Kingslayer. I'm this and that. And Seth was like, OK, you're right. I was going to say that. But what's the <laughs> and he was like, but you know what? You're not going to expect me to say this. I'm going to I'm going to ask Kurt Angle so I can fight Braun Strowman for next week. So that's the wow. that was the segue to show that he was going to do that. So that's what we're going to look for next week is Seth Rollins' turn to fight Braun Strowman, which I think is something to keep both of them active while they're, you know, regaining Cesaro being injured right now until he get his whole mouth situation fixed up. And while they're building up to this, Dean and Ambrose having to come and save Roman There's Reigns. There's no direction on Monday Night Raw right now. This, that's a There's l- no direction for one. Joe's on the show. <laughs> Because he's hurt. I know. Yeah. But that still hurts the flow of the show. True. Jeff Hardy's hurt. Yeah. Brock Lesnar's going to be going until 2018. Yep. No Cena. Yep. So it's just like we're going to see a multitude of episodes of just stick him there, stick him there. Yep. 
have these two few, even though it doesn't make sense, still do it. Uh, and yeah, that's our show for tonight. Yeah, that's you're actually right. There's gonna be a lot of gaps. I mean, you gotta give Strowman.